Now I've got a really unique pattern for you today. This is the first time I've tied it. And what's unique about it, it's one of the few flies that has a, a hackle on the rear. Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I'm talking about, I found it in Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia. It's called the Sheep Creek Special. Now it was created by George Biggs of Jerome, Idaho, probably sometime in the 1960s. I saw reference to it also in the 70s, so somewhere in that time frame. And he came up with this pattern to fish the Sheep Creek Reservoir, which is a big reservoir down in the southeast corner of Idaho and the northern border of Nevada. And of course, I've never been to this reservoir, but I did see it doing the research on this fly. It's a beautiful looking place. And they have some monster rainbows in this reservoir. I'm talking this big. Well, okay, maybe not that big, but probably this big. Anyway, some really big fish. And I didn't see any reference to this ever being a river fly, so I'm pretty sure it's a still water reservoir type fly. And I did see a couple different ways it could be tied. Typically it's on a size 6 to 10 hook and a 2x or 3x long, extra heavy. So like a big meaty uh, nymph hook or a small streamer hook. And I did see one version of it tied on a scud hook, but I think the longer big nymph or streamer hooks look a little bit better. Saw one version of it with a rib. Most of them didn't have the rib. I even saw one of them tied with a cactus chenille, but for the most part, it was usually a peacock chenille, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick to the recipe I see in, in this pattern encyclopedia. But it's a really simple pattern, and it's quite cool looking. I had a fun time tying it. I think you will. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, the Sheep Creek Special. Very simple pattern, but really kind of cool looking, and pretty fun to tie. Now, I've seen sizes on this, calls for a six to a 10, and actually a 3X or 4X long. So I didn't have a 3X long nymph hook. This is actually a streamer. Streamer hook is a size eight, but it is 3X long and a 2X strong. So I think it's gonna work just fine. And I'm gonna put down some black thread. I've got a 70 denier. I'm gonna take it back to the bend of the hook. And first thing we're gonna tie in is the back hackle. So I've seen this in a couple recipes, either called the rear hackle or just called a a uh, tail, but to me, I wouldn't call it a tail. And sometimes when I am too lazy to reach over there and grab my hackle gauge, what I'll do, I'll take this long feather and then just pull it around the hook. Say, okay, that might be a little longer than I want, so let's pull it till I get to about the right size. Okay, that's about it right there. Now I got that point, and I will just strip some of the fibers off and get a tie-in point. And I'm gonna catch this in concave side toward the hook. Let's do two wraps right here and then pull up make sure we got a little bit of bare stem showing need to back that off a little bit try it again okay and if i got a little bare stem showing it's going to make that first wrap look maybe just a little bit better so let's do a couple of wraps to bury that that right there and i've nicked my thread you see that but we'll work through that and we'll get to this, the good stuff here in just a second but what I'm gonna do, see where my thread is right now is about where I'm gonna stop wrapping that hackle. So what I'll do, I'll just take three wraps to get the thread out of the way. One, two, three, and specifically three, so I'll know how to back it off. Okay, so let's just wrap this hackle here in the back. And I'm gonna do probably four wraps. We'll see how four goes, maybe five. Just kind of right next to each other. It's not a big bushy hackle. Okay, I think that is, I think it was four. And see, watch this thread, let's back it up three turns. Two, three, and now I'm right back there where I want to tie it off. So let's catch this with two wraps right here and then we'll snip the front of this hackle feather. Okay. Now, the recipe calls for a peacock chenille. Now, let me show you a little trick. I don't have a peacock chenille, but I do have a medium olive and a light olive. So I'm going to, I stepped it down and took a small chenille instead of a medium and peacock. I just took two smalls and different colors. And I'm gonna catch this in right here. And I'm not worried about a lump because it's pretty thin stuff right here, so I will just catch that in. Let's see, right back there we're gonna wrap it. And then just try to bury this in. You could snip this if you wanted. 
but I don't think it's a real big deal. So let's just bury that right there. Take our thread up here to where we're gonna stop wrapping this body. So I've got my two strands right here. And what I will do, just try to rough them up a little bit, fluff them out. But I'll give them a couple of twists together. See, just kind of this right here. Not tight, but just a, a twist or two so that I'm getting that variegated look as I wrap it up. And I've got a couple of feathers, fibers right there that I probably should have trimmed, but I'm just gonna to try to hide them with this chenille. And maybe every three wraps or so, you might wanna give it another, you know, tighten it back up a little bit like that. Or don't worry about it. But what we're doing here is we're effectively getting kind of a variegated look by using two different strands of chenille. So I think we're good right there. Let's catch this off up here in the front. I think two wraps will be good for now and let's snip this excess. A couple extra wraps just to really lock that in. Now, mallard flank fibers for the, the wing. And I took a, a pretty, pretty big chunk, just this, this feather right here, just took, oh, probably more than you think you're gonna need. And if you can get it with the little sweat back, that's kind of cool. If not, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm just gonna tie it in Trude style with the tips of them reaching all the way back there to the hackle. So let's switch our hand right here. See if I can get a pinch wrap in on that. I'm gonna do two wraps right there. Kind of tight. Check my position, am I coming off the top? Yeah, I think so. We're looking just fine there. So a couple more wraps to secure this. Now I can snip off this front. And just cut this as close as you can. It'll make your head a little bit neater. Push it up with your fingernail if you need to. Take your thread right back behind the eye and we'll build this ramp up, get a nice clean head. Now it's a nymph or wet fly or whatever you want to call it, maybe a either or. So don't worry about making a big head on it. Just big enough to get a good whip finish and a nice drop of head cement. And there we go. Take a look at it. Do you have any cleanup? I got a little, little fiber right here coming up. I want to just snip that maybe or just ignore it. But there you go. Sheep Creek Special. Pretty cool looking fly, very simple to tie and uh, kind of fun. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.